I think it was ill-conceived. I think it was ill-timed. I think it's in the wrong place. The public is united against this, and I think that the will of the people is going to win out, and I can't wait to get in the fight. In one of his first appearances after winning the Republican primary for the County Commission District 3 seat, Clay Murphy took part in a press conference last week at the Embassy Suites overlooking Anastasia State Park. Liz Ryan was there. Local officials gathered at the shoreline to express their opposition to the idea of building a lodge on Anastasia State Park. As soon as the DEP proposed the plan, the people revolted. State Representative Cindy Stevenson heard from her constituents loud and clear. Phone calls, emails, I can barely go to the grocery store without somebody coming up and asking me about it. When the DEP secretary looks at the number of emails they have, I hope he, they have at least as many as I've had contacts personally and directly. The only good thing I can say about this is hearing from so many people who appreciate our parks and open space and don't want more overdevelopment in Florida. City of St. Augustine Beach Commissioner Don Samora says A1A and A1A Beach Boulevard couldn't withstand the increased traffic a lodge would bring. The intersection getting into the state park right now is known as Dead Man's Curve here locally, right? So that would be another problem, just the increased traffic to get in there. The proposal called for, among other things, a pickleball court and a 350-room building they called a lodge. I asked Henry Dean if he thought lodge is a misnomer. In my opinion, a 350-room hotel is a hotel. I've not really heard the term lodge used a lot in Florida. We do have several state parks which have a small number of cabins, but nothing like a 350-room hotel. Since the press conference, plans to develop Anastasia State Park have been shelved. The public's voices have been heard. More from the press conference tomorrow. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Liz Ryan. This local news is a service of your hometown Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. The morning of August 26th, I received a phone call from St. John's County Beach Management staff regarding a deceased dolphin. We're learning more about a dead dolphin found on St. Augustine Beach last week. I also received shortly after a text alert from our wildlife dispatch hotline, the 888-404-3922 that folks can call, that a citizen was reporting a deceased dolphin as well. Nadia Lentz is a marine mammal research scientist with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. So the animal was 245 centimeters in length. Sex was not be able, able to be determined due to the carcass being so heavily shark scavenged. Lynn says she was deployed from Jacksonville. We've got an F-250 pickup with a boom and a winch in back. Uh, then the animal was loaded into the easy lift. We drug it a little bit up, um, then loaded it. Into, I loaded it into the easy lift truck and then took it to one of our locations where we do necropsies to determine cause of death. Of course, this was so heavily scavenged that I don't have a ton of details. Um, it did have signs of xenobalanus, so just a soft-shelled barnacle, on um, the trailing edges of the tail fluke. The heart was present and part of the right lung. Otherwise, all internal organs were missing. Lynn says because of that, they're unable to determine how the dolphin died. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Daryl Moody. It's time for seniors to think about getting healthy this month in St. Augustine. The St. John's County Council on Aging is hosting a variety of classes at River House on Marine Street in St. Augustine. Carolyn Carger is the communications coordinator for the St. John's County Council on Aging. In September, classes offered include drawing and painting, guitar, ukulele, and singing, dance, including tap, ballet, tango, line dancing, and belly dancing. And the activity list is even longer. Exercise and healthy living classes, including Zumba, yoga, chair yoga, tai chi, and strength and balance, gardening, fishing, languages, lectures, support groups, book clubs, and more. Signing up is easy to do. Riverhouse is COA's lifelong learning center in downtown St. Augustine, and parking is free. Sign up for programs today by visiting coasjc.org slash Riverhouse. In addition, COA also offers transportation services, memory care, and meals on wheels. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. And now you're up to date with St. Augustine's Local Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.